Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come around my mouth. Before we get into hot topics, I want to tell y'all a cute story. So, I'm at home, and I was lying in my bed trying to get my stuff together for hot topics, and there's some kids at the pool, and I hear a voice. <laughs> it was so cute. I hear a voice talking about, part of that I run to the window and there's two little black girls uh, in a pool and uh, they're just swimming and having a good time. I thought that was so cute. I was like, oh, look, look at look, look at Haley Bailey out here inspiring the girls. Come on. You know, it's so crazy. Um, sometimes these kids, you know, they, they, you know, kids are kids. That's the thing. We all were kids. We know how we used to act. It ain't changing no time soon. Um, sometimes I think kids from other neighborhoods uh, are, that live around here, um, they come and they sneak into the pool. I saw somebody complaining on the community wall. And I get it. I, I think these kids, they probably know, because there are not a lot of kids that live in my apartment complex. Like, when I say I really don't see any, like, at all. Um, this one uh, Asian couple... They live in my building. Uh, I saw them coming home probably like a few months ago with a brand new baby. Um, but I don't really see kids in my apartment <laughs> at all. Um, so I don't know if these kids right now, if they're visiting, I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, someone wrote on the community wall and was basically complaining about the kids being at the pool and... They, I think they snuck in. They mentioned something about them sneaking in or thinking that they snuck in. And, you know, do I believe they sneak in? I do. <laughs> but I don't know. I think what it is is because the other day, it was a lot going on at this pool. I looked out the window. It was probably about 10 kids. They were all black, little boys and girls. They looked like they were probably between the ages of like seven and 10. I don't have an issue with the kids coming over to use the pool because I would rather have them over here in this pool than out on these streets getting into some mess. You know what I'm saying? So while I get it, you know, because sometimes they can get a little rowdy and very, 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 very loud. It's like the only thing that really, really bothers me that I do not like 100 percent is that the times I have seen them out, some of the kids out there. This time there are two grown women out here with these little girls. But the times I have seen the kids out there, girl, there is no type of adult supervision at all. Like the kids just be out there. Like, just be out there. I'm like, girl, where is your auntie, your uncle, girl, your gunkle, okay? Like, girl, where is your cousin, your mama, your daddy, your grandmama? Like, girl, ain't nobody out here watching y'all? Girl, y'all are not that old to be out here at the swimming pool by yourself. Girl, somebody been knocked their head on the concrete or just anything could happen. I could see if they were probably 13, 14, 15, maybe. But they looked like they were like, I said, now they could have been older, but they looked like they ranged from like 7 to 10. Girl, like, I could see. I'm, I'm, I was just hoping that maybe <laughs> one of the kids lived here. Again, I don't really see kids over here like that. And somebody lived on the first floor or somebody was sitting on their balcony watching the kids. But that's the only thing I don't like. Other than that, you know. Like I said, I'd rather have the kids over here in a swimming pool, <laughs> girl, than out on these streets getting into some mess, you know? But I haven't really seen anybody besides that one complaint from whoever lives here complaining about them being at the pool and, you know, them probably not living here. That's the only really complaint I've seen on the community wall. Now, I don't know if they're calling in to the leasing office and complaining. Girl, leave them kids alone. Them kids ain't bothering nobody, <laughs> Okay. Anyways, let's get into this mess, y'all. So, I mean, Megan Good supports her man, Jonathan Majors, during during a uh, court for his 
for his case. Um, Jonathan Majors arrived in court holding hands. They put girlfriend Megan Good as he as he faces, you already know, and harassment charges for a case involving ex-girlfriend. Um, I'm going to put the link so you can see them walking into court together. I mean, it's really just a quick just video of them just holding hands, walking into court. Girl, let me say something. <laughs> Girl, let me say something to Miss Megan Good. I don't want to be the punk on the World Wide Web. But I feel like, girl, we're going to have to just call a thing a thing. One of the cousins, shout out to the cousin who clocked this from the gig. I don't know how I didn't clock this. One of the cousins had said that they had felt that according to the alleged timeline that, you know, when Jonathan and the girlfriend got into it and allegedly they got into it because she saw some messages coming in, coming through Jonathan's phone from another woman. And then, girl, three weeks later, he pop up with making good, right? <laughs> so the cousin was basically like, girl, the other woman probably was making good. And I was like, girl, I didn't even think about that. I'm at the point now where I think it was making good. Girl, making good, you have to be a complete fool. Let me say something. I don't know why anyone will want to get into a relationship with anyone. And at the beginning stages of your relationship, you're having to walk into a courthouse to support this person in a potential DV case. Girl, that's how you start out your relationship. That's how you're starting out this dating thing. By walking, basically trying to support, trying to support this man. I think Megan Good is a bird. I think she's a mess. Even like the simple fact that that Jonathan got into a physical situation, alleged physical situation with another woman, right? And you're still like, like it just, it's like Megan girl. So at this point, I believe that Megan was the other woman. I do believe that. I believe that the woman who he was texting was Megan Good. Girl, ain't no relationships popping off that fast. Unless she was already in the picture. And now, girl, you prancing through the courthouse supporting your man. Supporting your man. I want to so show support. Girl, you look like a fool and a half. I wish I would meet somebody be involved with somebody and girl, we just we're just starting starting to go public and girl, I have to girl support you in a DV case. Girl. I think that is sad. I think that's pathetic. I think it's bird like behavior. I think Megan, Megan, I think you was a side chick turned girlfriend and now you're trying to support, show your support for the black man who they're trying to tear down. That's what I think. That's what I think is going on in Megan's head. This is my man, my man, my man, and I'm going to stick beside him. Why, girl, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I just, <laughs> I would just, be, <laughs> I would be careful linking myself to someone and your mess could potentially spill over into my plate and then my career could be potentially affected. It ain't like Megan Good is just this sought out, sought after actress, right? Like Megan Good works. I love the show Harlem, but it ain't like Megan Good is, you know what I'm saying, just we're in a movie every year. <laughs> I think Megan is a working actress. And I think, you know, she's a working actress. And I don't know how well Harlem is doing, but girl, I just would not want to mess up what I got going on. You got a nice little TV show. You're the lead or one of the leads. I would say the lead. 
And girl, I just want I wouldn't want I wouldn't want no Negro coming into the picture, girl, messing up what I got going on. Cause there have been times where I've seen Megan good in a show or two, and girl, it's canceled after the first season. Shout out to Megan. Girl, you a fool. <laughs> you a fool. Girl, you a fool and a half. A fool and three quarters. Girl, just a damn fool. <laughs> oh, we are. Ah, ah, ah. And another thing, too. I could see if Megan had been with Jonathan for some years now, you know, five, 10 years, had had invested, you know, was invested in their relationship, and then some stuff came back to haunt him. I saw a story the other day, it was a gay guy. Girl, some mess, he was in some mess, like in 2002, and girl, it just caught up with him the other day, and girl, now he in jail. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I was like, ooh, girl. So I could see if it was one of those situations. Sometimes you get involved with people. They don't tell you the full story. Sometimes they tell you back in the day, I used to get in trouble. And then some stuff just comes back and it's like, oh my God, now we here, right? I could wrap my head around that, I could. If Megan was like, I've been with this man for seven years. You know, when he was younger, he got into some trouble. Now it's coming back and I'm deciding, I'm deciding to stick beside him. I would still kind of be like, okay, girl, he, will he do the same for you, I guess? Um, but that's not the situation. From what we've been told, the situation is what we know is that he had a girlfriend, a white girl, they got into a fight, girl, he was supposed he was supposedly texting somebody or text messages were coming through, and all of a sudden, girl, this is your man, you're gonna stick beside him and it's only been a month and a half. <laughs> and now you holding his hand, walking into the courthouse together, like you bunny and Clyde taking on taking on the world. Girl, you a fool. Meg is a fool. She is a fool. She's a pick me girl. She looks like a fool. <laughs> and that's just what it is. All right. So Saucy Santana team denies receiving $25,000 advance after organization threatens to sue him for pulling out of Memphis Pride concert. So the material now uh, is calling cap. Saucy Santana's absence from the uh, Memphis Pride event may come with a hefty price tag as event organizers are now seeking reimbursement for the funds they allegedly paid out. A spokesperson um, from One Memphis, uh, One Memphis, One Vision notified TMZ Hip Hop that they issued a $25,000 upfront payment to the rapper for his performance that was scheduled to take place last weekend. However, due to his absence, they are demanding a full refund, even if it ne necessitates repayment and uh, installments. Uh, according to TMZ, the rapper actively promoted the event on, on Instagram, but unfortunately missed the performance due to a reported flight delay. OMOV alleges that they spent a significant amount of money on private on a private vehicle for Santana as he declined to use Uber Black. The rapper's team reportedly utilized the vehicle throughout the day, despite Saucy not being present. Um, the representative expresses the belief that Saucy lacks respect for the nonprofit organization, which advocates for youth dealing with HIV AIDS. Um, Saucy Santana uh, refutes uh, one Memphis uh, allegation, telling the outlet that the accusations are fabricated. Saucy's team claims uh, they have documentation to support their own version of events. Santana reportedly denies receiving the full $25,000 payment asserting that he only received half of the deposit prior to the show. Um, Saucy's uh, team states that they made alter uh, alternative plans, but ulti ultimately did not materialize for unspe uh, spec uh, specified reasons. <laughs> Girl. The first thing is this. This is no Tino shade to Saucy Santana. I love Saucy Santana. Do your big one, girl. But girl... <laughs> I don't know how much they pay Saucy Santana, and I don't know how much Saucy Santana bill is. A spokesperson from One Memphis, One Vision notified TMZ Hip Hop that they issued a $25,000 upfront payment to the rapper for his performance. I, I didn't know that Saucy was, was up there. 
<laughs> Girl, I'm not trying to count nobody's money. Girl, if you if you can get twenty five thousand plus dollars, so I'm assuming that the twenty five thousand dollars was just a deposit, and you know sometimes after the after the job is done, they pay you the rest. Girl, you making that much? So <laughs> I don't. I, I guess what it is in my head. Again, I shouldn't be counting nobody's pockets, but girl, we do it sometimes. I just would not. If somebody told me that Saucy Santana was making that much to perform, I would not believe it. Maybe ten thousand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then this is no tea, no shade to Memphis, Tennessee at all. But I, when I think of Memphis, Tennessee, I just don't think of this big, humongous pride where, girl, you can make that money back. So, like, maybe if it was L.A. Pride, I could see them probably shelling out a couple of dollars, right? Because it's L.A. Pride. If it was New York Pride, I could see them being able to shell out a couple of, do a couple of dollars. But I don't see y'all being able to shell, shell out no $25,000 and y'all in Memphis. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, girl, this is the one thing I wanted to talk about. <laughs> girl, it's this list for me. So... Saucy Santana has the <laughs> hospitality rider. So these are the things, I guess, that he requests. <laughs> Y'all listening? Listen, let me just start off by saying this. I'm not mad at none of the girls for wanting to be treated like a celebrity. I'm not mad at any of the girls for wanting to be treated, you know, girl, we all have our request. <laughs> I think I would probably... If I got to a certain level where I, you know, was doing these shows and all this stuff, I think I would probably be pro one of the easiest person people to work with. Girl, I don't need all that. Girl, just give me, just make sure I got some water and a little. Girl, matter of fact, don't, don't even worry about that because I don't know y'all might put some in the water. Girl, just make sure I got, make sure the room got some AC. <laughs> okay, I bring my own snacks. I bring my own water. I bring my own bottle because I don't trust people like that. Y'all gonna slip something in the bottle? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so this is what, this, these are, these are his requests, or uh, were his requests. One bottle of Casa Azul, <laughs> two bottles of 1942 Don Julio. Can I say something? This is no tea, no shade. Girl, y'all, the girls start acting real funny, girl. Y'all, Saucy Santana look like he been drinking Palma Sun and O.E., girl, and Taco Vodka and just up until the other day. Now, all of a sudden, girl, you requesting Castle Azul and 1942. <laughs> ah! Get off of my, get, get off of my line. Anyways, he has 12 cans of Red Bull, one case of Fiji water. Girl, we don't, girl, we don't go get you some Aquafina. Now the girl's drinking Fiji. Okay, girl. Uh, one case of Coca-Cola, orange juice, apple juice, assorted fruit, a fruit platter, pie pies, a box of legs, box mixed with legs, wings, breasts, white and dark meat, biscuits, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, and gravy and fries. I feel like this is what I, and this, and this is for all of these girls and boys. Everybody from the Jennifer Lopez's to the Saucy Santana's to the Holly Bears, whoever. I feel like sometimes when these celebrities do stuff like this, they just want to do it to feel like a certain way. Because the truth of the matter is Saucy Santana, Saucy Santana, I don't give a damn if it's Saucy Santana, Beyonce, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, I don't give a damn. You don't need all this shit. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't need all this. It's just, I feel like it's a way to make them feel like they're that girl. Girl, I had this request on my, this, 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 and I had everything laid out for me. Girl, if you performing, why are you backstage eating Popeye's chicken and biscuits and gravy and honey and jelly? Anyways, he has handheld electric fan, Vaseline cocoa butter gel, degree deodorant spray women's Girl, girl, listen, 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 Saucy Santana is a big nigga, okay? Now, I think Saucy Santana pronouns are he, him, and nigga, okay? And I don't think Saucy Santana identifies outside of anything other than a, being a man. Saucy Santana, you look like you about my size. You ain't got no business walking around here with no women's deodorant, girl. <laughs> you are a boy, Damon. If you don't go get you some goddamn axe <laughs> and slap that shit under your arms, you too big to be walking around here talking about, girl, I need some women's deodorant. No, you need some men, girl. 
for the big boys. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Shell. Um, he has twelve black hand um, handheld towels, three uh, hookah flavors. Um, oh, flavors: blueberry, vanilla, and wait, blueberry, vanilla, mint, and watermelon. And then fifty buffalo wings, mild, and to go boxes. That's what I'm saying, like girl. All this 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 request list. It's his request list, but I think that most of this shit is unnecessary. Maybe one bottle, maybe some water. <laughs> some apple juice, some pineapple juice, some cranberry juice, some ice. Can you please make sure that the room, it's the, the, the AC is set, is set on 65? Because it's probably going to be about five of us. And I get hot real easy. <laughs> okay? I feel like it's unnecessary. But shout out to Saucy Santana, child. Saucy, Santana, Saucy, Saucy, you wrong. This is the thing. And I know this happens a lot. These celebrities book these, you know, events. And then it's an airplane issue or a flight issue. And then they can't make it. Or they're coming from, you know, from New York trying to fly to Los Angeles and they only got an hour and a half. You know, like, so whatever the whatever the issue is, I hope they um, get it fixed. And if, if Saucy is in the wrong, girl, you need to get the people their money back. Okay. Okay, listen to that. I don't keep up with, I don't keep up with um, her like this. Um... Man explains why he threw phone at BB. What's her name? BB Rexa. BB Rexa's head during concert. Thought it would be funny. Send his ass to jail. That let's let, let's make that be funny. Socialize to get into this. This is according to Hollywood Unlocked. Um, as we previously reported, concert goer Nicholas Mal Wagner was arrested and charged with ASSAULT after he allegedly threw his phone at BB Rexa during a concert Sunday in NYC, sending the pop star to the hospital and ending her performance early. The 27-year-old New Jersey man was still in police custody as of Monday morning and was arraigned that day. According to the Manhattan District's Attorney Office, uh, Mr. Malvin, Malvin, <laughs> I don't know that man named Nicholas girl, admitted that he intentionally threw the phone at the singer. He explained, I was trying to see if I could hit her with the phone at the end of the show because I because it would be funny. I saw the video. When I say he knocked her in her maybe knocked her in her skull. Send his ass to jail. Let's that let, 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 let's see if that's funny to you. It ain't why would you think that it would be funny to throw a cell phone to see if you could hit somebody. Send his ass to jail. 365 days. Yeah. Matter of fact, I want to push it up to two years. Let's see if that's funny. I, th I think you should do jail time. I definitely think you should do jail time. And not no 90 days. A year minimum. Since you want to be funny. Girl, listen to this. This is a mess. Tory Lane's lawyer reportedly advised him against blaming Megan Thee Stallion's ex-friend, Kelsey Harris, for an infamous 2020 shooting. So in a series of emails obtained by legal uh, affairs journalist Megan Cuff, uh, Kuna, girl, I'll be messing these people's names up, R&B star Tory Lane's ex-attorney, um, Sean Holly seemingly pushed against her client's decision to claim that Megan Thee Stallion's former best friend Kelsey Harris fired the piece. As previously reported in 2020, Tory Lanez was accused of striking Megan Thee Stallion in her foot after the pair. Plus, K K Kelsey, Her K Kelsey Harrison. Kelsey Harris left a party at a reality... F uh, girl, I'm not reading all that, girl. Um... I'm not reading that. Y'all already know what happened with the case. 
exclusively revealed reveal, reveal by Megan in the recently exposed messages. Lane's old representative, Sean Holly, expressed her disapproval of arguing Kelsey Harris was responsible for the shots that hit Stallion. In November 2022, she reportedly wrote, Tori, as we discussed on Saturday, I am not comfortable advancing the Kelsey Harris defense primarily because I don't find it to be a viable strategy. Sean Holly continued by mentioning Lane's driver, Jaquan Smith's stance in the situation, along with his trial defender, George, whatever his last name is. Girl, this is what I got from it too. Someone wrote, y'all missing the point. The lawyer advised him against blaming Kelsey because a lawyer knew it was a lie. <laughs> Girl, that's what it come down to. I saw somebody write in the comment section. I forgot what comment section it was. Lawyers out there, correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody put, it was some some black guy who said that's her job. Basically saying the, the lawyer's job is to lie. <laughs> I don't think the I don't think a lawyer's job is to lie. I think that a lawyer's job, whether their client is innocent <laughs> or guilty, uh, well, regardless if their client is guilty, their job is to try and prove that they're innocent, right? I know that lawyer. They say lawyers lie, and I'm sure some of them do. But I don't think that you. Sh I don't think that her job is to intentionally go in and just say somebody did something or to lie to try to get a client off. My job is to try to prove that you're innocent. Even though I know you're guilty, my job is to prove that you're innocent. I guess some people can say that's a lie, but I don't think that's the same thing as just going in there, girl, putting something on somebody that ain't got nothing to do with it. Anyways, what else? I think that's it for now. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. All right. I'll be back later and we can talk about, girl, what's going on? On girl, What's going on with the baby fat girls? Girl, Kamora, uh, Ming Lee, <laughs> Aoki Lee, and Russell. Mm, girl, it's a mess. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.